Even the biggest brands in the world make some of the most common conversion rate optimization mistakes, and I'm gonna go over the ones that you can avoid in this video. Let's dive into it. Hey everyone, I'm John Timmerman. I cover the world's most exciting brands and marketing trends so that both you and I can grow our businesses faster. And today we're talking about conversion rate optimization mistakes or CRO mistakes that even the biggest brands in the world make. Uh, and quite frankly, you being a smaller brand, if you are one, you have uh, the ability to be more nimble than a huge, large corporation, which is how you can beat them. But you need to take action and fix some of these CRO mistakes. So what are some of these mistakes? Now, every day in my agency, Good Monster, our team is constantly reviewing conversion rates and average order values and click-through rates and all the KPIs that are necessary to ultimately get the sale. And it starts with conversion rate optimization because whether you're a B2B company or you're a D2C company or you're a retail company trying to go e-commerce, whatever it is, if you can increase your conversion rates, you don't have to spend more money on getting more traffic or building your audience, right? You'll get, if you can just convert your conversion rate from 1% to 2%, you effectively doubled your revenue right there. And if you can go from 1% to 4%, you quadrupled it without spending any more money or resources on driving more traffic. But what are some of the mistakes that a lot of us make when paying attention to CRO? Mistake number one that I see, and probably number one in frequency, but also number one in, um, I, I guess, urgency or importance, is... It's a common misconception that to increase conversion rate, you just have to stuff your website with CTAs and calls to action. We see this on so many websites that are over-optimized for conversion rate. There's so many buttons. There's just buttons everywhere. And when you do this on a desktop uh, or mobile, actually, for that matter, it really slows the website down from a technical standpoint because more things have to load, and it also overwhelms your users, especially the new ones who don't know who you are. So too many buttons is counterproductive. It will actually hurt your conversion rate, because even though you might put the button that says uh, buy now or get a free audit or whatever it is you're offering all over the place, if that's all that they see, they're visually overwhelmed so they can't actually get to the message of why they should get an audit or buy the product, okay? So mistake number one, too many buttons, too many call to actions, too many slide ins and pop ups all over the place. Too many calls to action will actually reduce your conversion rate. Okay, mistake number two is not implementing live chat software and even taking it one step further, live chat automation. So live chats is maybe something that you're currently implementing. Okay, you have a live chat on there, somebody can go, but a lot of times it's very passive. Companies set up a live chat because they're like, well, we can we can do live chat. People can ask questions. And what happens is when somebody actually goes on and activates the live chat, somebody's not there monitoring it. So what happens is a little thing pops up and it says, sorry, uh, you know, uh, our team is not online right now or something like that. Please leave an email. And this is fine. But the problem is live chat has been used for probably a decade now, five to 10 years, really, you know, really used by a lot of brands. And so Consumers are smart and we're used to convenience. We're used to Amazon. We're used to live chat software. Where we can get answers like that, okay, right away. And so if there's not an immediate solution to the question we have in that live chat, there's a high likelihood that they're going to bounce and you won't get the conversion that you want. So here's how to use live chat in a way that can increase your conversion rate. So let's go real deep first, okay? There's so many live chat plugins and software and, and platforms out there. You can just pick, go do a, re a review search, search for the, the best reviews and, and pick one of them because they all kind of do a lot of the same thing. But the way you want to optimize your, your live chat software is step one, you want to know what your call to action is. So I know I just told you don't over call to action your website, but the live chat could be one of two or three uh, call to action focuses of uh, on your website, especially on your homepage. Okay. So maybe you have in the menu, you have, let's just use good monsters website as an example. Okay. So we, our conversion rate optimization is focused on getting requests for proposals. Yours might be selling sneakers, whatever it is, 
put the button in the top menu of whatever the most important is. Ours is get a plan. And then in the hero banner, all right, then we have another button that says get a plan. Because if, if they uh, are on mobile or happen to not see the little button in the menu, then they have it right along with the most important message uh, on the homepage. And then the third is the live chat. That's the, the third place we want them to click. And if somebody clicks on the live chat, then you've, they've already taken an action and, and partially gotten into the funnel. But let's take it one step further. What you can do is have an automated um, live chat pop-up, which you're very, very familiar with seeing in a lot of websites, okay? But have it be incredibly value-driven uh, and very specific to your ICP or your customer persona. ICP if you're B2B. Uh, which is ideal customer profile, or persona if you're D2C or, or consumer focused. So make sure that you understand who your customer is and what their major problems are and why they clicked into your website in the first place. And you program that into the live chat automated pop-up uh, message. So what happens is somebody lands on the website and right away the live chat says, hey, are you here for X, Y, and Z? Question mark with a yes or no option right below it. Because what this is doing is it's inviting them in and asking them if they're there to get the very specific problem that you help solve solved. All right. So if you're a sneaker website, hey, are you here to get the latest, freshest sneakers on the market? Yes or no. All right. They're either going to see that and be in their mind, they're going to say, well, yeah, and then they're going to go shop the website or they're going to actually answer yes, and then they can get into an automated reply, which is they click yes. Let's use the sneaker example. They click yes, and the automated reply is fantastic. Here are some of the latest reviews on uh, on our sneakers, and then it can automatically populate you know, three reviews that actual customers left. All right, and then right after that, it can follow up with another automated message that says, also, here are our top selling sneakers from this month. So this is all automated, and it's more dynamic than just having a static hero banner, all right? Live chat, that's the point, is the live chat can be more dynamic and engaging than just having a static section met delivering a message on your website. Another key with live chat is to always make sure you end with some sort of funnel over to talking with somebody live. That is, uh, in our opinion, in Goodmaster's opinion, uh, that is one of the best ways to get somebody to really trust your brand and to ultimately get them through to a purchase. Because if they engage in the automated live chat, but it ends with... Um, Let's use the sneaker example. So it ends with, here are our top selling sneakers from last month. Then what happens is once somebody makes it to that level in the live chat, it get, gets kicked over to a customer service representative on your team who then jumps in and says, hey, Frank, which out of the three sneakers above do you think are the best fit for you? I'd love to offer you a 10% discount. Something to hook them in, and then you've got them chatting. Wow, that's awesome. I think I like number two the best. Customer service rep re replies, great. Do you want to go ahead and engage in a checkout? Do you think it's a good fit for you? Can I help you with sizes? Like, you know, they can take over whatever the script calls. But this is how you can improve your conversion rate by scaling the unscalable. So you might be thinking, I don't want a customer service rep. That means I have to pay them. That means, you know, that's, that's, eating into our profit margin? Can I just automate the whole thing? Yes, you can. But by ending it with a live rep, you're building trust, which ultimately could get you the sale, but it ultimately could improve word of mouth. People are going to go tell their friends. Think of the Zappos effect, you know, back in the day, a decade ago or more at this point, which was customer service above everything and built them into a billion dollar company, which is now owned by Amazon. So customer service rules, even if you might not think it's scalable. So CRO mistake number two is not utilizing live chat software to engage your users to its full extent. CRO mistake number three is not using dedicated landing pages or more specifically sales pages for all of your external campaigns. So most commonly this is 
uh, with PPC. We see this all the time with incoming clients to Good Monster that they've been running, you know, half a million dollars a month in PPC campaigns, Google Ads campaigns or Facebook campaigns or TikTok campaigns, and they're just they're just driving that traffic to a product page or a category page, even worse, or the worst of them all, just a homepage. Okay. And the problem is when you're spending that kind of money, or even if you're spending $5,000 a month, when you're spending any money and you're not, uh, you're not linking the ad that somebody sees on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Google, wherever it is, if you're not linking the copy and the imagery and the expectations from that ad to something very specific on the landing page where they get to, you're going to have a disconnect. So for instance, you're, you might be running an ad, the same ad, you might be running it to a 45-year-old female, a 25-year-old male, uh, somebody in Idaho, somebody in New York City, somebody in Canada. I mean, that's all the ad targeting, right? But if you're running different ads to all of those people, they all have very different expectations and pain points and challenges. So you might get them with the ad if you're running your ads really sm in, a, in a smart way. And your, your, set, your target settings are great. But when they all funnel into the same exact landing page, you're missing an opportunity to talk specifically to the 45-year-old female, to talk specifically to the 25-year-old male, to talk to specifically to the person in Canada, very different than the one in Idaho, okay? People want relatability. Uh, they want to relate to the brand. They want to know that the brand relates to them. They want to feel good about the products that they're buying. And if they feel real good, the social proof is there, the quality is there, the messaging is there, your conversion rates are going to be real high. So mistake number three is not using dedicated landing pages for your off-page marketing, your inbound marketing. So if you, can, you, if you can design a landing page that looks, feels, talks to, talks like, um, uh, and aligns with a specific audience segment, you're going to have a higher conversion rate with that segment. Also, a little sneaky reason why this is great is you can measure the results from different segments, and now you have a bunch of data that shows you, well, you know, audience segment number one, two, and three are converting at 8%, whereas, you know, 9, 10, and 11 are converting at 2%. And even though they're using the same focus strategy, this is just a less engaged audience. So either you need to change your targeting, get rid of that targeting altogether, or change the way you're communicating to that specific audience, okay? So you have the data now to make educated decisions to increase your conversion rate across the board. So avoid that mistake as well. Okay, we're gonna cap it at three mistakes. Like I said, there's a lot more, but these are some of the most common CRO mistakes that we see even the biggest brands in the world making. So don't make them because as I said in the beginning of this video, if you're smaller than a Fortune 500 company or some big holding company, that means you're probably more nimble and able to make these changes faster. You don't have the levels of approval from CMO to marketing director to e-commerce director to you know digital director to social director and all these other places, right? So you can move fast. So avoid these mistakes, beat the big brands. And if you thought this video was valuable, make sure you subscribe, share this with your team, and I'll see you in the next video.